This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Bioavailability is a common concern for supplements such as NMN and metformin, especially when taken orally. Today we will look at a study on quantum dot formulations as a way to make these drugs up to 100 times more effective in NMN and 25 times more effective for metformin, especially when targeting the liver. Here is the paper. Quantum dot nanomedicine formulations dramatically improve pharmacological properties and after uptake pathways of metformin and nicotinamide mononucleotide in aging mice. Quantum dots are crystals with a size in the nanometer or small number of micrometer range. They have uses in other areas but in this case we are using them for a drug delivery. The idea is that the drug of choice is attached to the QD making it easier to absorb into the body. The ideal quantum dot should be non-toxic and quickly removed from the body once the payload is delivered. In this case, the authors attached metformin and NMN to these particles. The liver takes up and clears nanomedicine, which is normally an obstacle for systemic therapies, but if what you are targeting is the liver itself, this works quite well. So in this study, they are looking at how well QD could be used to carry drugs into the liver. They examined orally administered QD metformin and QD NMN formulations on the liver to determine their pharmacodynamics and in particular their effect on glucose insulin metabolism in vitro and in vivo and the cellular pathways involved, how age affected these pathways and whether there was any toxicity from any long-term administrations of the QDs. The first test they did was to compare pharmacodynamics of metformin with and without QD. They used radioactive carbon-14 and tritium to label the quantum dots and metformin. Here we see the graph showing the area under the curve for quantum dots on their own, metformin on its own and QD with metformin. As we can see, metformin gets into the liver more quickly, peaking at 2 hours rather than 8 hours and remains for longer. In the small intestine we see that the metformin with QD is cleared more quickly which is what we want as we need to get the metformin into our bodies to be effective. And for the blood the metformin with QD peaks at 2 hours then dips at 8 and comes back at 24. Next they looked at metformin and NMN in vivo both on their own and with QD. They used a single oral dose and tested the impact with an oral glucose tolerance test or OGTT in three month old which is to say young mice. A dose of 100 mg per kilogram gave a 75% reduction in the area under the curve for metformin and we can see a dose of only 2.4 mg per kilogram had a similar effect for QD metformin. The optimal time for administration was also two hours before the test rather than four hours for metformin. We can also see that with an equidose of metformin and QD metformin, the QD metformin had a greater effect at all times on the OGTT until 24 hours when both showed no effect. For NMN this was not as potent as metformin at reducing blood glucose, but they did see the same effect for 800 mg as they did for 0.8 mg per kilogram of QD NMN. For equidose of NMN and QD NMN, we can see that at all time points QD NMN had a better effect. Some of the key effects of metformin and NMN is to upregulate AMPK and SIRT1 activation. We can see the effects of 4 mg per kilogram of QD metformin and 8 mg per kilogram of QD NMN in the top graphs. They saw an increase in total NAD with NMN again with a much lower dose of QD NMN. So NMN seems to have been more enhanced than metformin. This may be because NMN in its natural state will be utilized by the gut microbiome, but the QD NMN seems to avoid this. The next test was to see whether NMN that only affected the liver also had metabolic outcomes for the animal as they aged. So they tested three 18 and 24 month old mice with NMN and QD NMN over a two week period. You can see the results in these three graphs. Note that NMN was 800 mg per kilogram, whereas the QD NMN was 8 mg per kilogram. Here are the graphs for the 24 month old mouse. We see that NAD plus levels in the liver, AST and ALT, were better with QD NMN, while insulin was comparable, even with a lower dose. One concern with QDs is toxicity and whether the particles are being cleared from the body. They performed tests where they gave mice aged 8 to 12 months QDs for 100 days continuously. They did not find any significant difference in pro-inflammatory markers such as interleukin-6 or AST, ALT. 
They also looked at silver levels and they found that these were not increasing, showing that QDs were being cleared from the body. As they say, previous nanotoxicity studies saw issues that they have listed here. But after 100 days of treatment with quantum dots, they did not notice evidence for these. So in conclusion, silver sulfide quantum dots dramatically increased the effectiveness of NMN and metformin on the liver when acting on AMPK and SIRT1. The study showed that QDs can be effective carriers that have better uptake in the liver than the drug on its own, utilize lower doses, have greater physiological effects post-treatment, bypass drug-specific receptors uptake in the liver, mitigating age-related de decline, and show negligible toxicity in the first 100 days. This looks very promising, as of bioavailability of supplements like NMN is a matter of great concern. Having better availability with a smaller dose seems very interesting, an area that is definitely worth watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and will speak to you again soon.